Look at these people. They gathered in front of my house yesterday. They surrounded the building, blocked the entrance and would not let anybody in or out. Look at them cheering and clapping. That's so scary. This one is Mr. Lukai from State Security. When I opened the door, a man told me, if you come out, I will kill you. I am free now, at least physically. I was able to leave my apartment and move to a friend's house. I wouldn't have thought that last night, but my mind is still very tense. On the 9th of July 2015, China's police began arresting lawyers and human rights activists. In total, almost 300 were detained. My husband, Wang Shangzhang, was one of these lawyers. After my husband was detained, I started writing articles about my experience. I went to see government and legal agencies to inquire about my husband. That's when I started getting pressure from them. In the beginning, I lied to my son. I said, your father is on a business trip. But one day he suddenly asked me, Mom, why is my dad in prison? I want to hit them with my toy sword. That's what I want to do. You are allowed to be angry and to express your anger. But we do not resort to violence. We will use the law to solve this problem. I always knew that my husband risked detention, but I did not imagine the kind of hardship we had to endure. There were detentions in the past. They would, for example, arrest democracy activists who have been trying to organize a party. But that they would go after lawyers on such a scale, that is something we did not expect. It would be hard to go through this alone. Everybody tells you, keep quiet, don't stir up trouble. When I see her, we both know we want to speak up. All of us lawyers' wives did not know each other before. But this has brought us together. The most desperate thing about this country is not that people are treated unjustly. What really causes despair is that when that happens, nobody is willing to stand up for them and speak out. Moreover, few people even dare to show compassion. When they can't threaten you, they can't cheat you into compliance with promises. But when that doesn't work, they have no more ways. To continue speaking the truth is the safest option for us. We need to keep raising our voices. We need to continue expressing our resistance and anger towards the relevant departments. And we hope people will continue to pay attention. This is the last time I saw him, in the train to Suzhou. He went to Suzhou to work on a case. 
I joined him to visit some friends. From there, I went to my hometown. Suddenly, he stopped answering the phone. I tried to get through for a whole morning. Then I knew something terrible had happened. But I did not think it would be such a long time. This feels so distant now. I constantly cried for six months. I cried so much that people got scared when they looked at my face. Every day I would check my phone to see whether there was any news about him. One day I tried to read my messages and I could not recognize some of the characters anymore. They were blurred. That's when I understood that I had cried too much. I told only one friend. Whom? Her, Su Ming. Did he ask you? Or did you tell him yourself? He asked me where my father was. I made him promise he wouldn't tell anybody. It's a secret. Mm. I'm very nervous and excited. I did not sleep. I've been waiting for this for three and a half years. Today is his court hearing. Yesterday, around 9.30, I went downstairs. A state security agent came to see me. He told me I was not allowed to go to Tianjin, where his trial is held. At noon, I looked downstairs. I saw five state security cars. So, when I go down in a moment, I don't know what will happen. I'm nervous. I've been through this many times, but each time is different. The adrenaline rises every time anew. <laughs> I sent you a message yesterday. The trial is not open to the public. It concerns state secrets. My husband disappeared three and a half years ago. I'm his wife. I have the right to attend his trial. This is not about somebody's wife. It's about state secrets. Let me tell you, you're still young. Don't do this kind of work. You're infringing on other people's dignity. You're violating their rights. This will take its toll on you as well. Go, go, go. Today, Wang Shanzhang was sentenced to four and a half years in prison. I firmly refuse to accept this verdict. I do not recognize it. I think the reason is that he has remained firm. He has not cooperated and not pleaded guilty. That's why the verdict is so harsh. Wang Shanzhang is not guilty. The police and the judges who convicted him are. The suffering is most severe in the beginning when they place you in secret prisons. You don't have any contact to the outside world. Sometimes even the guards don't talk to you. Every day you have to sit or stand. You're not allowed to move. After some time, they showed me a photo of my son. He came with his mother to look for me. That's when I collapsed. I cried bitterly and couldn't stop for three days. I think if I had been less resilient psychologically, I might have gone mad.
Is it that one? An apricot tree. Since I was released in April, I feel drawn to nature. I enjoy being outdoors often. So I started getting interested in what all these plants are. A friend recommended an app that recognizes them. That's great. I don't trust my words to express this, the feeling to have lost something and then to get it back. I cannot find words to express it. It feels like something exceptionally precious. But there is also fear, fear that I might lose him again. The authorities have revoked my license to practice law, but I'm appealing anyway against what has been done to me. I want my case to be heard in court. When I just came out, my son and I were very affectionate with each other, at least superficially. But since then, the estrangement has become quite visible. When I tell him something or criticize him, he opposes me, rebels. This is something that gives me a headache. I think a lot about how to bridge this gap and to ease the effects of my detention on my son.